Hi everyone and happy winter. It's still winter out there and I was wondering, hmm, what could I do to kind of remind myself of some of the summer fishing? I thought I would put together a series of my biggest bass from summer 2017. So as I was looking through my footage, I have footage of um, four five pound bass that I caught this summer. Now if you're watching this in Florida or Alabama or South um, five pound bass, yeah, probably pretty common, but Minnesota, I feel like a five pounder is a pretty good sized bass. So most of them have been featured in a fishing report, but I thought I would take some time and kind of give you the full story about how each one of them came about. Well, you can't have a fishing story without a nice fire going, so uh, let's get a good fire going. All right, so um, wanted to show you some of the equipment that I was using when I caught the um, big fish on this trip. Um, I usually use a Booyah Pad Crasher frog, um, but this trip I was using um, this frog. And if you know anything about frog fishing, you've probably heard of a frog called the Swamp Donkey. Now here's the story. Um, Reaction Innovations makes a Swamp Donkey and that's this frog, but actually not really this frog. This frog was a jackal frog. Um, Reaction Innovations had stopped making the swamp donkey and um, it kind of became a legend if you follow it, uh, followed it on the internet um, and people were looking for them. So somebody got a hold of the mold and they made these. Now looking on Tackle Warehouse's site, Reaction Innovations now has a swamp donkey, and these frogs look a little bit different. Regardless, um, this is the old swamp donkey model. Um, the thing that's really nice is it's kind of pointed, and it really comes through the weeds nicely. Um, this color is also a color that I don't usually use, but I was using it that day, and it's kind of a nice bright color when you have a lot of cover. I think it helps the fish locate the frogs. So. Um, that's the, the frog I was using. Um, as far as rod and reel, I'm lucky enough to have a buddy who um, helps me build my rods. So I don't know how much of this you can see. Um, it's a St. Croix, a seven foot medium heavy. It's a Legend Elite series. And what we've done is um, we've uh, put a custom grip on it. Most of this is decorative if you know anything about rod making, so it just kind of makes it look fancy. But they're really nice rods. This is a great um, frog fishing rod. Ended up doing a split grip. Put a couple of these decals that are made out of shells down here. So, and then I, um, on this rod I've got a Patriarch, Fluger Patriarch um, bait casting reel. Uh, usually, I don't know if it's my kind of musky fishing uh, background in me, but I like to have a bigger bait caster on my reel. So I have super heavy line for frog fishing. I think this is um, 80 pound super slick, and then a uh, Fluger Patriarch reel, which is a little bigger profile, but it's kind of nice when you have to horse them out of the weeds, which is what I ended up having to do for the bass that I caught in this video. I was up the river fishing kind of the, the dead water, figuring the fish probably peeled off and they're cruising around all these weeds that are starting to come up. And I wasn't having any action. Um, you'll see, I'm, I'm going to include the first fish that I caught. And I was standing up in my kayak fishing. Hobies are just awesome. I was able to turn all the way around. I left part of that footage just so you can see. They're so stable, you can just turn around. So I was fishing out the back of my boat and um, the cast that I made um, towards the river, towards the moving water, um, got me my first fish. So that gave me a little information there that maybe they're hanging out on that edge. And that makes sense, you know, just kind of waiting for the, um, for the bait fish or whatever they want to eat to come by.
What have we got? So once I caught that three pounder, I uh, fished a little bit more in that area. I didn't get anything. So I decided to just let myself go down the river and I was making a bunch of short casts right where the, um, the current and the slack water kind of met up. And uh, that's when I was able to hook the bigger fish. Hate to say it, the big fish hit and there's not a, a huge fight because it immediately got tangled up in some of those weeds that were coming up. Um, but I didn't care. Once I saw that fish, it's kind of funny when you, when you see the video, I kind of look to see what it is. It feels so heavy and I had caught so many northerns, I was checking to see if it was a northern. And uh, when I finally saw through the weeds what it was, um, I was pretty surprised. And I think I said something like, holy bajoli. I don't know that I've ever said that in my life, but it was a good fish and I was pretty excited. It was nice to get a picture of the fish and it's also nice to see that big fish swim away because hopefully next summer, it'll be even bigger than it was. So that fish was the reason that I kept my scale on board the rest of the summer. I didn't usually use the scale, but I wish I would have had it. I think it um, actually hit the six pound mark um, I measured it. The length was uh, 21 inches, and it was a really fat 21 incher. You'll see some of the other five pounders that I caught on the lake that I actually put on the scale um, weren't as long as that one, and uh, that one was the fattest out of all the fish that I caught this summer. So, kind of a fish story, but not really because I have some video of it. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I will say that uh, my GoPro 5 was pretty new to me. And so I was kind of messing around with the settings. And in the end, uh, it did kind of affect the footage of my bigger, my big bass that I caught. Um, because I was in the middle of the lake and I thought, oh, it'd be nice to get some shots behind the boat, um, by the side of the boat. And I thought, oh, what's this super view setting? So I put the super view setting on, which gives you a really nice panoramic shot of the lake. But it really widens out the shot. And uh, once I caught the big bass that I caught, um, I hadn't changed back from the super view setting. So I think it really did take away a little bit from the bass. Um, but I did take a still shot. So you can see the size of the bass. <laughs> Mm. 
Yes. Wow. Holy bajoli. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget there's only 104 more days until fishing opener in Minnesota.